All right, welcome everyone to this no fluff Google Ads video campaign setup. Now, let's dive right in. How do you actually set up a really, really good video campaign or YouTube campaign, right? Now, when you are in your account, you go to campaigns and then get, again, click on campaigns and campaigns. You might find that plus button in another interface as well, or you can find it here again, right? So there's different ways to get started. Just look out for the blue plus button under the tab campaigns. Now, then we're gonna go for new campaign. And what we'll do next is my favorite thing is I choose create a campaign without guidance. And the reason for that is if I choose lead sales, whatever, it already limits the options that I have when creating the campaign, right? And again, this is Google's way of going, you know, more and more towards automation, but I still, I still like having some control over my campaigns, right? Because that way they really run better and, and, and perform better. So create a campaign without a guidance, then we're going to choose video. And then we have a whole bunch of campaign subtypes here. Now, depending on when you are watching this, you might see different subtypes or a different interface here. Google is changing that interface, I think almost every two to three months in our accounts, right? But we want to make sure that you at least are able to follow. If you see an option here that you don't see in this video, then please feel free to comment below and we'd be more than happy to help you however we can. Now, if you're just getting started, you might be a little bit confused here about all these options here, right? Um, I would not choose drive conversions here right now because I'll show you what happens at the very moment of recording the video, which is if I click on continue, it's going to give me an option to start a demand gen campaign. And in fact, it actually switches me over to a demand gen campaign automatically, right? So I have to like switch back manually. However, this demand gen campaign type will replace the conversion campaign. Right. So if you see this sometime in like, let's say March, 2025, I, you can still try to create a conversion campaign type, but know that by, I think April or May, the campaign types will switch over automatically to a demand chain. Right. So in this case, we're going to stick with a normal video views campaign, right? So that could be really, really useful if you just want to create brand awareness, if you want to reach your customers when they're like at home watching something on the smart TV, when they are watching YouTube on their phone and so on. So let's continue. And we're going to say start new. And we always going to give the baby a name. Very important, right? I see a lot of people leaving the campaign name as it is it's going to get confusing later on, right? So typically what I like to do is I'll create um, a name that reflects the video campaign type when it started and the year it's starting, right? And then maybe you could add like, let's say product name here, right? And of course, what's important here is make sure that you adapt this for your own company, right? I see people copying this, literally writing this. Okay. So I want to make sure you adapt it for your own company. Now, multi-format ads. Yes. I'm typically happy with that. I do want to keep that the bid strategy. I can't change it here right now. It's okay. We're going to keep it on target cost per view. Now budget start and end dates. Typically I'd want a YouTube campaign to run throughout the year right? It's if I just run a general brand awareness campaign, if you want to run a YouTube campaign for just a specific period of time, because it's a special holiday and whatever, then go with a campaign total, right? So I can say, I want to spend 5,000 bucks over the time of two weeks, right? But typically I'd rather go for a daily budget. And if you are a small advertiser, then often, you know, you can already get started with like six or even 11 bucks a day, right? Obviously put the start date in the future. If you are not yet ready to run it, you can choose any of it. Or if you just want to make sure that you still can make some edits after watching this video, right? And I keep the end date at none networks. I typically take off the video partners because they don't really perform that well. And I just keep YouTube, right? If anything is grayed out here, then that means it's currently not available for this 
campaign subtype, okay? Now, locations enter your location, right? And you can even go on advanced search and choose a radius, right? If like you'd want to show the video ad within, let's say, 20 miles off wherever your office is, if you're running a physical location, a physical business, right? Languages we keep as it is. Related videos, that would be cool if you have a YouTube channel that already has a lot of like subscribers and so on, and you already have uploaded a whole bunch of videos, then definitely add like two related videos that would show up next to your ad. This is really useful. It's kind of like site links where it shows people what, um, you know, what, what other videos you have, what other products or services you might be offering. Cool. Then we click on additional settings as always. We're going to keep it for now on all eligible devices, right? We can adjust that later on. Now, most important is the frequency capping and even like the biggest companies forget this. And some people are just okay with annoying others with ads. I am not, right? I feel like if somebody has seen an ad for a certain amount of time and they don't take action, they're probably not interested, right? So the best practice that I also teach in our university courses is that we want to go with the impression frequency of about, let's say three per week and the view frequency I cap it probably at like three or four months. Now, what's the difference between impression and view frequency here? Impression is just how many times somebody has seen the ad and view is somebody that has engaged or interacted with the ad, right? So if somebody has like engaged, interacted with the ad four times already, which is a lot, which means clicked on a button, clicked on a link, and they haven't taken action, then most likely they're not interested, right? So this is why I choose like three per week and four per month. Remember, this is a, a campaign that's ongoing, right? So even if I keep this on, then a user could see this ad up to 12 times a month, which could be a lot as well, right? But this is something you can monitor as your campaign progresses, and you can always change that. Ad schedule, third-party measurement, that's all good. Now, Let's create the audience here as well. You could skip that here if you're not yet sure, but I want to take you through at least one audience setup so that you can start your video campaign with that. I'll give the ad group a name after I've decided which audience to start with. And let me show you what I mean by this here. So demographics, I want to first change the demographics if let's say my service is for people over the age of 35 and maybe I'm only targeting females right? I'm just making something up here right now. And then obviously you can target the other um, aspects as well. However, I would recommend to not keep it too limited in the beginning if you're just getting started, right? Because you will get data for all of these aspects, which will then help you understand for what, for which age range does your ad work best for, um, for which gender does your ad work best, for which um, household income does your ad work best, and so on, right? And now here's where we get into the whole fun, setting up the detailed demographics and audiences. And we even got more here. Now, if you're just getting started, I think one of the best audiences to get started with is the custom search terms. We can target people based on the search activity in Google or YouTube, and then show them videos on YouTube, right? Your video ads. And so what you can do here is you click in the browser bar here, click on plus new custom search terms. And here again, another important tip that I see almost every single customer get wrong that that comes to us. We want to create one search term per segment. What do I mean by that? A lot of people put all the search terms in one ad group uh, in one audience, right? So here's what they do. They would say, I want to target people who are looking for, let's say law firms, right? So they put law firms and then they go here and they say law firms in LA and they say, um, business law firms. Then they say employment attorney near me and so on. And they put like a whole bunch of search terms in one segment here, right? And I don't want that. The reason is if I put all the search terms in one segment, Google does not give me any data on which of the search terms is actually relevant to me. And there can be huge discrepancies in 
data among different search terms, right? So what you want to do is you want to create only one audience per search term, right? So I would call this audience law firms in LA. I have the search term law firms in LA and then I save it. And then I create again, the next search term. Obviously this is a bit more work in the beginning, but it pays off every single time that we do this, right? Try to add at least like 15 to 20 custom search terms here. The more, the better. You don't need to add all different kinds of a word, right? Like plural, singular, and so on. Google recognizes that and is smart enough, right? Now, then you can see that you already get an idea of the available impressions on the right hand side. And I would say something around like the seven, eight figure mark is okay, right? So like in the single million digits or like in the double digits millions, if it's a little bit higher than that, I would say in the beginning, don't worry about it. The, I really don't want you to have like analysis paralysis. I just want you to get started and not worry about that too much because you can always pause or remove what doesn't work later on when your campaign is running, right? If you feel like you're very clear about what you want to exclude, you can exclude like certain website visitors, right? Or create a new segment there. This might be a little bit more of an advanced type, but I just want to make you aware of it, right? We typically keep audience expansion off. Very important because we don't get any data about which audience is actually targeted there. And we've never seen that that really helps improve the performance, right? And then you can add a bunch of other content, but uh, if you just said one ad group up with search terms then that's already enough. Now, before we get into creating the ad, I actually want you to go back up and give the ad group a name. Very important again, right? So in this case, we could call it custom search terms um, because that would be the audience that we've chosen. And if you want, you can also again add month and year for your starting time and date. All right, let's go back down to the ad creation. Now, what you ideally should do here is you should implement your video ad here that you have already created, right? And make sure you've connected your YouTube ad account with, with your Google ads account, right? So whatever video ad that you've created in YouTube, just paste the URL here and then you can continue with the ad creation. I'm just going to take one of our videos for now, just to show you how it shows up with the ad here. So let's see, say I want to promote this video here, right? So this is one of our other training videos. And you can see here that YouTube is letting you select or Google is letting you select which kind of um, URL you can use. So definitely always make sure to use a URL here. Let's go for this one. So this would be one of our free trainings that I would people to, that I would want people to go to after they have, um, watched this ad, right? And then you can also adjust the display path. So you could say free training in this case. And then I could say, um, let's do it the other way around. I could say, Google, Google ads, free training. So you definitely want to make sure that you adjust that because the more you control you have over your ad, the better you can add a call to action, right? It's limited to 10, right? So in this case, I would say maybe either watch now or sign up, right? I can add another headline here. So in this case, I would look at the landing page. You can see it here, right? So I probably want to use the headline here. And I'm going to put this in here and I can already see it's too long. So maybe I'd rather want to use it here as a long headline. And as a short headline, I might want to use, let's see what we got. Let's see what works here. Awesome. All right. Um, my nose is a little bit itching because where I'm recording this from is in Mexico city and it's actually really high up. It's like 2000 meters or like 7,000 feet up, I think. Um, so the air is really dry. So if you see me touching my nose, 
that's the reason why. Um, and I don't want to interrupt this video. I just want to keep going here with you guys. So um, I put the long headline here and then here I could put, let's see what we got. Oh, I could put this here. All right. So then I can see in the preview here on the difference in the different formats, how it would show up. All right. Perfect. Okay. Add your L options. I don't need that. Um, add name. I'd probably want to give it a name in this case, like it would be an acupuncturist's one, right? And then I also want to upload an image. That's the um, companion banner, which is 300 times 60 pixels. And the maximum file size is 150 kilobyte. The best thing for you to do is here to go into Canva, design it, have a, a call to action on, I would say maximum five words, right? And this will be shown on the right side of your ad. So if we're here, it's going to be shown right here. Huh? Awesome. So you got that, you got that. Get vertical versions of your videos. Mm, in this case, I click on show examples. You can, if you want to, um, I think it sometimes helps, but make sure your video shows up well on, in a vertical format as well, right? Bit, Google gives you an, an example of what bit to use. Just use that, that's absolutely okay. And then when you're done with that, you see the details on the right-hand side here, right? Which is your estimated performance. And what's interesting here, sometimes as the budget goes up, the average cost per view actually goes up too, right? So a higher budget isn't necessarily better for your performance or for your spend, right? And then you can click on create campaign. You can publish it and that's it. Let us know in the comments below. Was this helpful to you? What did you learn? Which audiences are you using, right? Or obviously if you got stuck anywhere, if you have any questions.